Okay, YouTubers, or tubes as Ron Jenkins likes to call people that watch YouTube and use YouTube. This is a simple science project, once again. It's not how to build an alarm clock radio out of an FM transmitter. Now what we're going to do, it's still reversibility in nature. You need a motor. Now this motor, get a closer look, came out of one of those uh, um, electric Walmart scooters. And it's a pretty powerful motor. It's a DC motor. I haven't had it apart, but I'm pretty sure it's a permanent magnet motor. Um, you're going to need, well you don't need, but just follow along. I have a cordless drill. You're going to see where that comes in. A um, couple of alligator clips. Color is not important. Uh, 9 volt battery or a a D cell battery, any kind of battery. This, it's hard to see, is a low voltage light bulb. Uh, I came out of a, an exit light and I don't remember 100% but I think it's a 4 volt. It's a GE909. It might be a 6 volt. Now, we know that a motor can be a generator, a generator can be a motor, um, there's some efficiency issues associated. Permanent magnet motors seem to work pretty well um, in reverse. Okay, we know that we need a cordless drill, a motor, 9 volt battery, light bulb. Oh, one thing I left out. You don't have to get a fancy one, but being that I'm an electrician, I have one. A voltmeter. Doesn't have to have the uh, clamp on amp, amp probe style to it. Just something that registers voltage. Our motor that we got out of our scooter, I've got some alligator clips hooked to it. Polarity is not important. Um, if you hook it up backwards, it'll run the other way. Uh, we're not using a high powered battery or any line voltage. Let's say, be careful anyway. Okay, I've got the motor situated here. Hopefully you can see it. I'm going to just touch the battery lead to it and you can see it spin. Well, you can see that the torque is making it move like that. Now, uh, if you find a similar motor, be careful because if it's high speed and you did what I did, then it would wrap up your wires if you're not careful. Okay, I'm going to leave the um, alligator clips hooked to it. Um, it's probably a better idea that I don't have the wires to where they could touch, so I kind of fold them back a little. Now, my light bulb, you can use variations <laughs> on this. Now, to show you how powerful this particular motor is, I'm going to spin it by hand and, and, and hopefully you can see the light bulb flash. It's not very bright. It, it's generating electricity, but that would be very inefficient. So. I'm going to take my drill and put it on the end of the motor and I'm not going to like hold it there high speed but uh, here we go. You can probably get a good view of it. Now I'm going to spin the motor. Look at that little thing light up. That's it. Okay. Now that wasn't very fast. But what, what I want to know is how much voltage is it putting out? The faster it goes, the more voltage it's going to put out. That's a given. We know that. Um, and another thing would be if you were to keep accelerating your speed, eventually you're going to burn something up. So you would need a regulator of sorts. You, you want a controlled RPM, which we're going to get to that. I'm going to hook my leads up to my meter and turn it on DC volts. This is the DC motor. And I'm going to put my drill back on the motor. Kind of have to be careful doing this. Now, I'll lay the motor down where I can spin it. I'm going to try to hold this as steady as I can. 
I can't see the meter really. Right now we're at 5.2 volts, and I'm not even really giving it any pressure, any gas, so to speak. You see the meter climb. Moving along pretty good. I got my drill wide open. 8.8 volts. Now, okay, what's the point of this? Not much of a point. It's a little simple science project. What I want to do later on in my next few videos, I'm going to build a prop for this. And I'm going to mount it on a stand and give it some wind power. Uh, my drill, just for giggles, is an old Milwaukee, not the beer, uh, old Milwaukee hammer drill. Um, I don't think it's much over 1400 RPM, to tell you the truth. Now, with some simple gearing, pulley styles, we're going to make this motor where it puts out a little more than 8.8 .8 volts. I know it will because I think the battery that powered the motor on the scooter was some ridiculous, not ridiculous, but I think it was like 24 volt. But anyway, it's a heavy duty motor, it'll handle it. Now you can play around with different DC motors and get different results. Um, typically, if it's a heavy motor like this, which you can't really tell in the video, but it's pretty heavy, it's pretty solid, and it's if you took it apart, it's got permanent magnets. Those are the ones that are going to be um, efficient both ways as a motor or a generator. Now you could take an AC motor like out of a washing machine or out of a um, out of a uh, box fan and you're not going to get much power the other way. They're not designed for that. They will put out voltage and it will be AC but it's not going to be much. You'd have to really get some RPMs. The DC motors are very efficient because of their magnet style. And of course the bigger and stronger the magnet and yada yada, the more powerful your motor. Well, thanks and please be nice with the comments.